Hey guys, welcome to Channel BK. My name is Brian. Welcome to another review. Sorry that this one is a few days after the album came out. It's obvious why, but this one is for the Kamazi Washington album, The Epic. Kamazi Washington is a band leader, composer, mainly saxophonist, and this is his brand new album. And I've never really heard of him until I started hearing little buzzes about who he was and what he's done. And that made me really excited to listen to this album. He's done stuff with a lot of different artists, but most recently he did some work on the last Flying Lotus album, You're Dead, which I loved. It was one of my favorite albums of last year. So I was really interested in hearing what this album was going to be, and I knew he was on the same record or the record label that Flying Lotus created, Brain Feeder. So I was hoping that this was going to be a really intriguing listen. And it's a lot to take in. It's three hours. I could have watched a Nolan Batman movie. I could have watched a James Cameron movie. I could have watched any of the Lord of the Rings movies next to this. Because this is just as long. It's a lot to get through. I don't really think you need to listen to it all the way through. Because I feel like each of the three semi-albums on this full project ends very well. And they feel like their own projects in a way. So I don't think you really need to go, uh, 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 like I did the couple times that I listened to it. And to be honest, it is what the title is. It's epic. It's grand scale. So many intricate things, so many great arrangements from horns to saxophones to drums to extra different percussion to singing to strings. Everything's there. It feels so great and it just really feels like a very condensed album with every little thing popping or feeling great in the spots that they're in. Now, each of these albums starts off very differently than the next. Something like Change of the Guard, which is the very first track on this whole entire thing, starts it grand. This nice piano starts it off quietly, and then this fanfare brings it in. Some nice, hard-hitting drums throughout the track, and it has so many great solos from the horns and the saxophone, and I think this is a great way to start it off. And then, we have Misunderstanding, which is the intro to the second disc, which is absolutely chaotic. It's sporadic, it's insane, and I love Loved it. But then the third opening to the final disc on this album, Rerun Home, is actually a little bit different. It's a little bit smoother. It has a little bit more of an interesting sort of groove. It has a nice little like break at the last minute and a half with the nice drums in it. And then there's also like a kind of a little bit of bongo sounds throughout it as well. And again, it's one of these albums where you really need to get through the mass amounts of music because for the most part, this whole album is instruments only. There is some obviously extra vocals and there are some songs that do actually have real singing like Malcolm's theme, Henrietta, our hero, the rhythm changes. And to be honest, that's actually really the only fault of this album, I feel like. Even though I felt like a good majority of the tracks with singing on them I liked, it felt very hammy. Like, it sort of felt hammy. I think the only track I actually really, really, really thought the singing was cool with what they were doing was Malcolm's theme with the little insert of Malcolm talking at the end. I thought that was a really good track. But it wasn't like the singing was bad or the lyrics were terrible. It just, it felt very, again, hammy and sort of showy on the tracks there it was. I think especially Ch Cherokee, which was on the third disc of this sort of big album. And I thought that was kind of, to me, one of the weaker parts with the singing. But again, like each of the albums has sort of, not necessarily the same flow, but it has every single pit stop that it needs to hit. It has the big bombastic tracks, the very smooth back laid back tracks, the very minimalist sort of, I guess the more graceful tracks in the album. But to me, I thought the first disc was great. I thought the third disc was great but I felt that the second disc on this whole thing was absolutely excellent. I thought the whole second disc was incredible and amazing, and I thought, to me, sort of a perfect album out of the three of them, which is because it's the one that I really want to go back and listen to so much. Like I said, something like Misunderstanding, which is big and crazy, and then we follow it up with Leroy and Lanisha. I know I, if I said that name wrong, I do apologize, but that's a little bit more slowed, a little bit more laid back, but it still has that same energy, which was great too, and that's another thing too, is the energy level throughout this whole three-hour beast really does go throughout each track. Rerun, which has this gorgeous string section with these really beautiful sounding vocals at the beginning bring it in and then there's some great trombone and saxophone throughout the whole thing with the drums i thought it was a nice combination seven prayers which has some nice horns has some nice soft piano and this is another track where it's very graceful it's very lush it's very kind of quiet and other than the first three tracks which has this sort of energy to it this feels a little bit more held back and a little bit more like again calm and quiet henrietta 
our hero follows up seven prayers. This has a nice little sort of melody, I guess, to it where there's the singing to it with extra background vocals and then it gets huge and then the vocals sort of stripped away and then we get the nice soft instrumentation again and then the music gets huge again and then we get back to the singing. So it's sort of like we hear the singing for the soft in the big parts and then we get the soft in the big parts just with the instruments and then we sort of get back to the singing and then we finish off this album with the Magnificent Seven. Oh my god. Oh my god. No. I just... I can't even deal with this. I just, I can't. This ending was fucking incredible. It was so awesome. It has this nice funky intro that leads off the track, and this track is actually like the longest one on this whole album. The rest of them are like seven to nine minutes. This is 12 minutes, which isn't the longest on the whole album, but it's just a huge way to close off the second disc very strongly, very strongly. But I think there's a lot of really nice moments with some really differences with the instrumentation. For example, on Final Thought, which is the fourth track on the first disc. I know that's going to be confusing to say, but it had some nasty saxophone, some absolutely nasty saxophone that really gave that track a lot of great character. And then we followed it up with the next step, which is a great track, but the last two minutes has a really nice outro because it's very quiet and calm, just like seven prayers on the second disc. And then we end that part with the rhythm changes, which again, I thought the singing was pretty good on this track. And this was actually one of the more shorter tracks on this disc. And I thought again, a nice way to end this disc. Now obviously not the Magnificent Seven or even in a way the message, which is the final, final track on this whole entire thing, but it's still a really nice way to end it off. And it has like a nice groove to it too. And then there's tracks like Claire Day Loon on the third disc or Isabel on the first which have a little bit more of this kind of nice mood to it. They were a great mood tracks. And then like I said, something like Malcolm's Theme, which had this really nice percussion and it had some really nice hi-hats to it with obviously Malcolm's speech coming in and then they have some nice quiet singing to end the track off as well. The second track on the first disc has this really nice funky bass intro and then we get just a plethora of great instrumentation from piano, from sax. I think there's some trombone in this one as well. Some really interesting hi-hats. The drums especially were great on this track as well and one of the things I really liked about this track it kind of was a little slowish obviously coming off from Change of the Guard but just the ending was just huge and big and I thought that that was a great way to end that as well and there's a lot of these tracks as I've been talking about where there's sort of a nice good mood to it and then there's some interesting change-ups and it's not they're not like all of a sudden because sometimes it slowly ends a track off or hugely ends a track off it's never like out of nowhere you get like these cra crazy change-ups yeah honestly i thought this was an incredible album it definitely lives up to its name and it's definitely a beast that you don't really need to listen to the full three hours i think the ending to the discs do a really good job of feeling like three separate albums but if you listen to this fully you're gonna get in to just a huge plethora of stuff. Great instrumentation, good singing when it needed to be. I think sometimes this was a little too hammy for me, but I thought all the changes were great, some interesting melodies, some great sort of blueprints that were laid on all three albums where there were certain ways that they were all going from like a huge track or a big bombastic track to a more laid back track to some moodier stuff and to some more quiet reserved tracks. But yeah, honestly, I think this is an incredible album and definitely one of the best of the year. But what do you guys think of the album? Which is your favorite disc? What is your favorite tracks on it? Leave that all in the comments below. If you liked, please like. And also, if you want to subscribe, you'll see more music reviews as well as some movie reviews and some TV reviews sprinkled in there. And I'm going to be trying to roll out some more original stuff soon. If there's any albums that you want me to check out or try and review, please leave those in the comments below as well. I'm trying to get up to date with those. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and tuning into Channel BK. Peace out, guys.